Say amen. amen. Well, you never. Uh, there used, we sing a song that's an old story that never, never gets old, and you never get tired of hearing this. No matter how long you've been to church, that it don't ever grow old. And if it does, there's either something wrong with you or the church you're going to. Because the real thing don't get old. I heard about this old man and woman, and they've been married about 60 years. And he's 95 and she's 90. And, and they've, they've had some uh, uh, sudden talk to, a, talk to a doctor. And he said, huh? He said, I said, God and true. She said, huh? He said, I said you is tried and true. She said, what did you say? He hauled right there. He said, I said you is tried and true. She said, well, I'm tired of you too. <laughs> and that might be, I hope you don't feel that way about church. You should never feel that way about God, the Bible, church. Sure, stuff happens. Sure, the devil knocks you down. Sure, we all have problems. We all get sick. Everybody has problems. You'll live. Get over it. Serve God anyway, all the way to the end. There ain't no quitting. There ain't no turning back. It just push on, push on, people. Push on till we cross the finish line. Now this morning, take your Bible, turn to Revelation chapter number one. The book of uh, Revelation chapter number one this, this morning. And uh, I, I want to preach, last Sunday morning I talked about the, the death of Jesus on the cross. And these are some words that Jesus spoke after he rose from the dead, and this was written in 90 A.D., if he went to heaven in 30, 33 A.D., that was 40, uh, 30, 37 years after he went back to heaven. 57 years. 57 years after he went back to heaven. 90 A.D., when these words were spoken. Look with me, if you will, Revelation chapter 1, verse 7. His prophecy, his prophecy. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. Them people drove them nails in his hands. They're going to see him again one day. But the shoe am going to be on the other foot. It's going to be a different story. And all kindreds of the earth. Even so, amen. Now, look on over to Peen. 18, chapter 1, verse number 18. I am he that liveth and was dead. See, there's your resurrection. I was dead, but ain't no more. And behold, I am alive forevermore of hell and of death. Coming back, he's alive. He ain't dead no more. You know, I'm preaching this morning on the subject he wouldn't stay dead, and he won't stay gone. Just like he wouldn't stay dead, he ain't going to stay gone. Just like the devil tried to keep him out of the womb, uh, the devil tried to keep him out of the tomb, and couldn't do it. So this morning, I want to talk about that. Christianity begins where all other religions in the world end. Uh, if you went somewhere this morning and found the grave of Muhammad, and you could dig up the remains of Muhammad, it would not affect one Muslim on this earth. Anybody in Islam can practice their religion with Muhammad's dust laying in front of it. If you went and found the tomb of Buddha, wherever there in the world that might be, and dug up whatever's left of him and set it in a little, on a little table, every Buddhist in the world could still be a good Buddhist with his remains. If you found one bone of Jesus Christ, we're out of business. It all hinges on the subject of him being alive. Thank God. Thank God. If Jesus ain't alive, there are no Christians. There's no such thing. The Bible says it like this. We are of all men most miserable. We have no hope. So I'm going to preach on, he wouldn't stay dead, and he won't stay gone. I got a privilege today. And my privilege is, I don't know why God's so good to me, but he gives me the privilege of telling you people, he wouldn't stay dead, and he ain't going to stay gone. First thing I want to say this morning is this. The devil could not defeat him. The devil could not defeat him. We was out on witness an over yonder trailer park on the other side of the interstate one day, and there's a girl about 13 or 14, 
uh, talking, they were talking about the Lord and the devil and God and the devil. And uh, one of them said, if Jesus and the devil got in a fight, who'd win? And the girl said, I don't know, the devil, I guess. Uh, because she'd been watching rock videos and they saw Jesus like a little anemic sissy and the devil, a big strong guy with muscles. And that's not true. The devil could not defeat him. He couldn't keep him in the womb. He tried to kill him as a child. Uh, when Pharaoh, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, passed a, Herod passed a law that all the kids under two years old should be killed. He tried to have him killed. And then the devil met him after he'd fasted 40 days and 40 nights. And the devil came up and said, I'll get you. I got everybody else. I got Adam to sin. I got Eve to sin. I got Cain and Abel to sin. I got Noah to sin. I got Lot to sin. I got all them guys. I got David to mess. I messed up Noah. No, I, I can get you too. And, and the, the devil said, if you're so big and tough and wonderful, turn that rock right there into a piece of bread. He ain't ate nothing in 40 days. And the Lord looked back at him and he said, uh, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God shall man live. Bam! Hit the devil like that. And the devil said, uh, man, I ain't never been hit like that before. He comes back and the devil said, if you're the son of God, try and defeat him, see? If you're the son of God, if you're the son of God, uh, cast yourself off this mountain. For it's written, I know scripture too, you know, his angels will catch you before you get hurt. And the Lord said, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Bam! Hit him again. The devil said, okay, here's my best shot. I'll give you everything in the world if you'll fall down and worship me. He said, so what? He said, Ever, all the riches, all the what? P. Diddy would. Kanye would. Taylor Swift did. I, I, I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. Fall down one time. And the Lord looked back at him and said, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Bam. Knocked him out, buddy. Knocked him out. And the Bible said the devil leave it. I'm telling you, the devil couldn't defeat him. I know how they, betray, they portray Christ in Hollywood as a little, little skinny looking real White skin, blue eyes, and red hair. Jesus didn't look like a cat. And his hand like a girl. That ain't the way Jesus was. He was a man. He was a man's man. He grew up in a carpenter shop. He had calluses on his rough. He knew how to work for a living. He knew what it was like uh, to, to, to pain, have pain and be acquainted with sorrow and grief. The devil couldn't defeat him. The devil couldn't go get him to deter. The devil couldn't get him to detour. And the devil couldn't... Uh, he tried to kill him before he even got to the cross, and he couldn't do it. I'm telling you, the devil couldn't defeat him. And then death could not hold him. Death uh, was uh, the lure of all of them. Death got everybody. There, everybody who's ever lived on this planet, approximately 8 billion, 8 billion, 7 of them live now, and if there's another billion or two lived back in history, I guess would be 8 billion, maybe a little more, has died. And unless God worked a miracle, every one of them is still dead. Unless God worked an exception, which he did with Enoch, every one of them is still dead. Enoch is the only bi person in the Bible who, who did not die and will never die. A picture of the church of, that's alive when Jesus comes back. But everybody else had to die except one man. And he got the victory over death. God did a miracle. God did it. Death could not hold his prey. Jesus, my Savior, he tore the bars away. Jesus, my Lord, up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph o'er his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose. Listen, people, he's alive right now. He's, he's looking at us right now. He's in this place. He's in this room right now. He walks with me and talks with me and tells me I'm his own. Death could not hold him. The grave could not keep him. The grave couldn't keep Jesus. I mean, it kept them all of him. You know, you know, uh, we get accused of believing fairy tales. These weirdo nuts uh, get on YouTube and TikTok and stuff like that. And they get on and say, oh, you dumb Christians believe in talking snakes. Well, at least we don't believe everybody in the world come from a rock. All right, don't talk to us about being dumb, okay, or being superstitious. Uh, there was a serpent in the garden who talked, but he wasn't a snake on the ground. He was a beautiful, winged, per perfect, almost perfect creature who spoke to Eve. So the, our critics make fools out of themselves when, when they say uh, they laugh at us for believing in the resurrection. Do you realize this, this morning that there's over 500 people saw Jesus Christ after he rose from the dead? 500 eyewitnesses have court. 
I don't believe he's alive. Sir, would you come to court and stand, please? Did you see Jesus Christ with your own eyes? Yes, I did. You do know that you could die for this, right? Yes, I do know that. And you're sticking by your story. 500 of them. Number two, get up here. Number three, get up here. 299, get up here. 364, get up here. 500. There wasn't that many people seen Abraham Lincoln get shot, y'all. Nobody doubts that. Anybody in here say, I don't really believe Abraham Lincoln. You don't, you don't have no trouble believing that because the devil don't care if you believe that. See, the spirit makes you doubt Jesus. It makes you think, Oh, is that really real? It's a spiritual th battle. And there's more people saw it. Listen, every one of those apostles, every one of them, except Judas, he fell, and John, they couldn't kill him. All the other ten died a violent, terrible, martyr's death. And you don't do that for something that you're lying about. Now, you're going to say, he's alive, he's alive, he's alive. We told you he's alive. Okay. We'll tie a rope around your neck, drag you through the streets of Alexandria, and beat your brains out. You still say he's alive? Yes. If they'd have been lying, they said, "Well, just kidding, y'all. Just kidding. Uh, uh, I don't. I don't know what happened to him. I guess he's still in there." Every one of them. Philip was crucified. Matthew had his brains beat out with an axe. James was beheaded. The other James had his brains beat out. Mark was dragged through the streets. See our brand of Christianity nowadays, how far it is from that. What a bunch of sissies we got now. Good night. I mean, uh, listen, Thomas was hit with a spear. Bartholomew was crucified. Luke was hanged. Peter was crucified upside down. And every one of them said, go ahead and do it. You sure he's alive? He's alive. They gave their life before him. As, as my old preacher friend, Brother Willard Thomas, wrote, I believe God gave him the point. Here's what he said. They laid his body in Joseph's new tomb and filled his disciples with sorrow and gloom. They did not remember what he said, that he would die, but he wouldn't stay dead. Mary came at the break of day and found the stone was rolled away. She saw an angel and in terror fled and told his disciples, that he wouldn't stay dead. In that dark, cold tomb, he would not stay. He conquered death and walked away. And now the old grave lost its fear and dread. He lives again, people. He wouldn't stay dead. Full atonement, pardon, and for, were made. And forever my sin debt was paid. The price of his blood was lower, crimson red. And I'm thankful today that he wouldn't stay dead. Let's go to our churches and cry aloud. Let's go to the marketplace and talk to the crowd. Let's go to the mission fields that lie up ahead. And tell the whole world that he wouldn't stay dead. That's the best news the world's ever heard. Church, shut up right there. I'm about to get... I'm about to feel religious there, amen. I'm telling you, Brother Houdini couldn't have got out of that tomb. Uh, uh, John Dillinger couldn't have got out of that mess. Jesus, up from the grave, he arose with a mighty triumph over his foes. I said he wouldn't stay dead. Part two, he won't stay gone. That means if all those scriptures were true, all the rest of them that say he's coming back is true also. Guess what? He's coming back. Let's look at the, the signs of his coming. The signs of his coming are absolutely, absolutely, absolutely everywhere. We are living in the craziest, weirdest time that the whole world... Listen, y'all. You know, uh, there's written history started in 4000 B.C. There is no written history of human beings before 4000 B.C. Do you know how somebody went somewhere in 4000 B.C.? They rode a horse or a camel or, or they went, or rode, or walked or rode a boat. You know how somebody got somewhere in 3000 B.C.? They rode a horse, they rode a camel, they rode a donkey, or they rode a boat or they walked. You know how somebody got somewhere in 1000 B.C.? Same way. You know how people got around in 1000 A.D.? They rode a horse. They rode a camel. They, rode, they, they walked. Or they, they took a boat. Do you know how people uh, got around in 1100 A.D., 1200 A.D., 1300 A.D., 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, same way. But all of a sudden, all of a sudden, we've had 60 centuries 
And 59 of them, people walked to rode a horse. And Daniel said, this is a sign of the times. Daniel said, the way you're going to seal up the vision till the time of the end and then reveal it, knowledge shall be increased. And all of a sudden, boom, the Wright brothers took off. Henry Ford, they invented an automobile. Now think now, you got to go back 150, 200 years ago. Never happened before. And then we come up in 1946. Some other stuff happened with a guy by the name of Jack Parsons. JPL. They call it JPL, Jack Parsons uh, Laboratory, Jet Pro Propulsion Laboratory. He invented rocket fuel is what the guy did. And he was hooked up with Aleister Crowley, who was called the Beast and a worshiper of Satan. And somehow another of them guys tapped into some higher knowledge. And in 1946, these guys come along, some bunch of stuff happened. He wound up blowing his face off in a, in a laboratory experiment. And but rocket fuel down there, and they call him JPL, Jack Parsons Laboratory. And uh, a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff in that I ain't got time to get into. But I'm trying to tell you how you know the Bible through. And and they they and they, they took this guy and the Bible prophesied that it would be that way. You realize this morning. You realize, up until 1900, knowledge doubled every 100 years. Yeah, right now, today, knowledge doubles every two months. Every two months, knowledge of humanity doubles. Until we are now, see, AI. AI, artificial intelligence. You ain't heard it yet, you will. It's coming down the pike really quick. That's why all these pictures you see and stuff of stuff, you don't even know if it's real or not. AI generated can now make pictures. They they can make a picture of, of Jaden standing on top of the Empire State Building, uh, you know, uh, with, with a hamburger in one hand and a, and a, and a shotgun in the other hand, and, uh, and, and, make, and you think it's real and make your real voice. They can do it right now. Why are these pictures of Mars? Mars is 45 million miles from here, people. You really expect us to believe you're taking close-up pictures of rock? Come on. Come. 45 million miles. Ah, good night in the morning. And, and AI is, is beginning to change everything. Now, some of the leaders of this, in, of this study have now quit the group because they said it's become sentient. Sentient means it can think on its own. And it's so complicated. That now, AI now I can think 100,000 times faster than you and I as human beings. They say that there is more potential for good or evil than any invention in the history of the world. And that everything now is getting ready. It's like inventing the, in, coming up with fire, the wheel, stuff like that. That's how big AI is. That's how it's going to change the world for Elon Musk has now put the computer chip implanted in a person's head. Now, why am I saying all this? I'm saying all this because these are signs. These are signs that the Lord's coming. The Lord gave several signs. Knowledge shall increase. He said, as it was in the days of Noah, as it was in the days of Lot. What was it doing in the days of Noah? Marrying, giving him marriage. Marriage meant absolutely nothing. Marriage, shag up, marriage, shag up, do whatever you want to do. And it meant nothing. That's a sign that Jesus is coming back. He ain't going to stay gone. He's coming back. What was the days of Lot? God burned Sodom and Gomorrah to the ground uh, for the sin of homosexuality. Who would have thought that we would live to see the day when our government now will protect the right of a seven or an eight year old to change their, to try to change their gender. Listen, I'm not trying to be ugly. I don't hate nobody. I, I love everybody. But listen, people, God made you male or God made you female. And, and that's all you're ever going to be. You butcher yourself up, but you're still going to stand before God as a male or a female. And who would have thought we ever even, would even have to say something like that? That's it's a sign of the day that we're living. I tell you, I said uh, 30 years ago, I told people, I said, if we allow this generation of, of, of homosexuals to convince us as born that way, the next generation of pedophiles is going to convince us as born that way. And it's happening. 
professors are coming out now saying that we shouldn't be hard on pedophiles because they are minor attracted people and they didn't choose that. They were born like that. Now I'm telling you, that is a sign, y'all. That's a sign Jesus is coming back. The sexualization of children in our society today is the saddest, most pitiful, uh, heartbreaking thing that you can imagine. And that's a sign Jesus is coming. When they start to mistreat little kids, buddy, you better look up Lord fix and do something. You know how you know that? In Exodus, when he's killing kids, God got the children of Israel out, out of bondage. You know what when they do when Jesus comes? When Jesus comes the first time, they are killing kids. Try to kill him. When a nation starts killing babies, like we're doing in this country today, 4,400 every day. I'm, I'm not trying to be ugly. I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. I'm trying to help these young people. Listen, people. 250 people die a day on drugs. That's 100,000 a year just in America. Just a few little more grains of fentanyl on that hit, buddy, and you're dead. And there, while I've been up here preaching this morning, there have been five die every five minutes since we've been in this church. I'm telling you the signs are everywhere. The Antichrist will use transhumanism. Transhumanism is human and machine merging. Uh, part human, part machine. Daniel said it like this, iron and clay. And, uh, and they said, that uh, the Antichrist, well, you know, now imagine, here's an Antichrist, and they set him down for an interview. What country you come from? I mean, he's a, he looks like a mixture of all, all people. Say, here he is. This is the guy everybody's been talking about. Have y'all heard about him? He's going to bring world peace. How'd he get here? I don't know. They said he'd been here for a while. Somebody else said he just showed up. I don't know. Where'd all them other people go? I don't know what happened to them. They said they had to transport them to Alpha Centauri to rehabilitate them because they couldn't fit in with the new world order. And I don't know who are talking about us. And, and they got the Antichrist down there and they said, uh, well, sir, uh, you have so much knowledge. How many, how many kids are there in Uganda under 12? He'll look at them and he'll say uh, 652,798. I'll say, what? What's the highest mountain in the south, either part of, of, uh, of uh, France? Highest hill. Just going to do like that. And the Bible said he'll have all signs and lying wonders. And then when the disease comes out, like the Wuhan flu, when the coronavirus comes out or something else, he'll say, all you have to do is get this. The vaccine is in the chip. And when you get to jail, listen, I used to preach back in the 80s. I still got it on video. I used to preach back in the 80s that one day you'd go to the grocery store and get your groceries and just put your hand out and pay for it. And people laughed. They thought, You're the dumb. that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. I said, well, that's what the Bible said. That's what. But it ain't nobody laughing now, are they? I mean, it's doing, they're already doing it right now. And really, that's not even a bad idea. Except for where it's leading. Actually, that's a good idea. It keeps getting robbed, stuff like that. So on the surface, that's not a bad, bad idea. But the direction that we're going, the Bible said there will come a time when a person won't be able to buy or sell without the mark. And the Bible said the mark would be in, not on, in the hand, inside, or in the forehead. Crazy, man, crazy. I used to preach. I remember them old preachers would preach when I first got saved. They said them, Revelation chapter 11. They said them two witnesses, Moses and Elijah. They said those two witnesses, they're going to be murdered because God protects them for three and a half years. So they get to preach. They get a lot of converts and everything. Then all of a sudden, the, the Lord says, all right, we're getting ready to have all hell break loose here. And the Antichrist makes the abomination of desolation in the middle of the tribulation and sacrifice of pig blood or something like that over there in Jerusalem. They're getting that stuff ready to build that temple, you know. You know that, right? I know people personally, Ralph Sexton. I know other people that, that, that have been there and seen the building that they have ready to construct the temple in Jerusalem to go back to offering sacrifices again. Right now. And the red heifer, you heard about them? They, they, they could not, they could not sacrifice. I ain't talking about the people on the view. I, I'm, not, I'm not about, in the Bible, the red heifer was, was a, a cow. And it was completely red. 
No spot, no blemish, perfect. And, I, and they, they brought in there and they found some after thousands of years. And they got them over there. And the Jewish leader said, yeah, we're just waiting. We're just waiting. So everything's in place in Jerusalem for the Antichrist to come and take over. Everything's falling into place here. The days of Noah, the days of Lot. And you put all this big picture together and you put the violence and the drugs and you add all that up together, there ain't but one thing you can come up with, y'all. He's not staying gone. He's not staying gone. Amen? That's right, brother. That's right. Hallelujah. This morning, he will not stay gone. Ladies and gentlemen, Moses and Elijah will be killed. And all them preachers, thousands of years ago, preached that everybody in the world would see them guys laying in that. Now, you, you remember now when that was wrote, you couldn't travel more than 50 miles from where you was born your whole life. Right? Most people in the world never go more than 50 miles from where they was born their whole life until this century. So think about that. Here's these guys writing. Their bodies will lay in the street three days and a half and the whole world is going to watch them. Now, you know why you're sitting there and it don't bother you? Because you know that ain't nothing to, that's no big deal now. There's 8 billion people in the world and there's 6 billion cell phones, smartphones in the world right now. 6 billion. Almost enough. You take out babies, that's enough for about everybody. So now, it is possible for the first time in human history. Now, remember now, that was wrote 2,000 years ago. When you couldn't see two, two miles. And now, everybody in the world can watch it as it happens live. The, the mark. They, people you say, there ain't no way in the world somebody could get a mark on everybody. Well, that's ridiculous. How are you going to find all these people? And other, it ain't nobody thinking about that. That's weird now. That's what the, the whole coronavirus thing anything, was to get us conditioned to everybody going out and bound out with one big worldwide governmental uh, 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 mandate. And the whole thing leading to a one world government. Listen, I don't know how long we've got. I don't think you should. I think you ought to work hard, raise your family, enjoy life, do what you need to do, play sports, uh, work hard, be a witness, stay faithful to God, live for God, go to church, raise your family like you're going to be here another hundred years. But I'm telling you, people, listen, they ain't never, ever, ever been a time like we are seeing now. It is not absurd. Nobody's laughing now about that prophecy of them two witnesses. Nobody's laughing now about the red heifers. Nobody's laughing now about the, the sound, signs of his coming. But let me talk about the sounds of his coming. You know what the sounds of his coming are? The voice of the archangel and the trump of God. The trump. Trump is, an, is a sound a trumpet makes. When a trumpet goes beep, that the sound of that is a trump, the trump of God. In John chapter 12, verse 28 and 9, the Bible said the Father spoke and the people said that thundered. So all the people somewhere listening for my name. And so one of these days, there's going to be a trumpet sound. And to the world, it's just going to sound like a big old kaboom. But to me, it'll say, Brother Danny, get on up here. And to you, it'll say, your name. Come on up hither. And the Bible said the sound will come. They said some old hippie blowed a trumpet at a concert out there toward Woodstock somewhere and played it so loud it busted some people's eardrums. I thought, that ain't nothing. If a man can design an instrument and a speaker and a woofer and tweeters that'll bust somebody's eardrum, God ain't got no trouble making a trumpet can wake up dead people. I'm telling you, he can do it and he will do it. And that's the sound of his coming. And then we'll say in closing this morning, the selection of his coming. The Bible said he'll come as a thief in the night. That means everybody ain't going. That means some will be taken, others will be left. This is where it starts getting scary. If you're not saved here this morning, if you if you are here this morning and you're not right with God, if Jesus come today, you'd be left behind. Don't do it. Don't take that chance. Don't take that chance. It'll be a scary thing. What if all of a sudden, I know this sounds like science fiction, but so does a man getting up out of a grave. What if all of a sudden, bam, about 90% of the people in here just vanished. And all you look and see my Easter egg coat. 
and our, our clothes laying on the floor. False teeth, wigs, <laughs> other stuff we won't talk about. Well, it, like that one guy said, his wife died. His wife died. She had so much junk. He got to look around the house about, found him enough stuff to make him nothing. <laughs> but you can imagine. You can imagine. You can imagine. Left behind. I can't think of anything scarier, anything worse, anything more horrible than to think, my baby's gone. My baby's gone. Where's my baby? God, I'm sorry. God, I should have got saved. My wife's gone. Where's my wife? Where's my wife? She's gone. God, call the, listen, the churches will be full. People will be begging God, trying to call the preacher. Then the preacher won't answer because he's gone too if he's saved. I'm telling you, people, he didn't stay dead and he ain't going to stay gone. He said, I'll come. Like a thief in the night. One shall be taken. The other shall be left. Up. Up, the Lord's going to call them. From the quiet valley. Up from the sunny hillsides. Up from the village burial grounds. Out in the north, north the west. A radiant host shall rise. People will be walking down the street. Caught up. People will be uh, bowing in secret prayer. In their prayer closet. Caught up. People will be worrying about their bills. What am I going to do? Bam. There's the Lord coming back. People will be doubting their salvation. Bam. You won't never doubt it again. People will worry about it now. People will be reading the Word of God. Caught up. People will be laying on the bed of suffering in the hospital. Am I ever going to get out of here? Bam. Brand new body. Listen, that's the blessed hope. That's the blessed hope. I've seen all this world I want to see. This old world ain't doing nothing but going down, y'all. This old world getting worse and worse. But thanks be unto God. Me and you have the promise of the hope that Jesus is coming back again. Just like he told his disciples, I'm going to die, but I'm coming back. He told me and you, I'm going to heaven, but I'm coming back. He didn't stay dead. And he won't stay gone. My question this morning is this. Are you ready to meet? Well, he may not come 20 years. That, you're right. That's true. may not. Ain't nobody knows when the Lord comes back. But you don't know he might not come the next hour either. Or you might die and meet him in the next hour. I want to tell you something this morning. Girls, y'all come and get a song. He wouldn't stay dead. And he won't stay gone. Let's stand together with our heads bowed, please. Every head bowed. Every head bowed and every eyes closed. Nobody's talking. Nobody's moving. Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed this morning. Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed this morning. Now look, y'all. I don't care what, what you've been through. I don't care if you was mistreated when you was a child. I mean, I care, but you know what I mean. It don't matter. It don't matter. It don't matter if every preacher in North Carolina quit preaching tonight. It ain't got nothing to do with it. You're going to face God. You are going to face God. If you're here this morning, you say, Brother Danny, I'm here because it's Easter. Somebody invited me. And deep down in my heart, I know that I'm not right with God. I know I'm not right. I know I'm not right. Preacher, I need prayer. Preacher, I need prayer. I've been saved, but I'm not right with God. I'm not right with the Lord. Would you pray for me? Would you let us pray for you this morning? Just slip up that hand. Take it right back down. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I have probably 20 hands going up here this morning. God bless you. God bless you. Maybe you're here this morning. You've never been saved. You're not saved, young lady. You're not saved, ma'am. You can come up here and get saved. Somebody take the Bible, show you exactly what you've got to do to get saved. You can do it. You can do it. Will you do it? Will you do it? Will you do it? Get your life right with God. Mama, you got kids. Daddy, you got kids. You got a family. You, you're ain't. You're going to be responsible for their spiritual welfare. You answer to God one day. Daddy, of how you raised your family. Let's get this altar this morning and do business with God. Come on. Come on, Daddy. Come on, sir. Come on, Mama. Let's do business with the Lord. So I'm coming. I need some ladies. Come pray right here. Amen. Amen. We're first time visiting a lady right here on the bus. Y'all come pray with this girl. Some of you Christian ladies that know how to pray, please. Amen. Amen. God's speaking to your heart this morning. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name. Holy Ghost, do a work in our hearts. 
God, touch somebody's heart, Lord, and make it real to them again. Maybe there's somebody here that's cold or backslid. Lord, help them to get their life right today. Have your way in our hearts this morning. Do what needs to be done. Help us, oh God, we pray. Whatever you do, we'll thank you for it. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray, and for his sake we ask it. Amen, amen, amen. He's singing right now. Amen, 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 amen. 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 Are you struggling this morning? Just get out of your seat. Come on, right now. Come on. Just get out of your seat. Come on, right now. Come on. Come on, Daddy. Come on, Mama. Get out of your seat. Come on, sir. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Get it right. Let's get down here and get it right with the Lord this morning. That's the smartest thing you'll ever do in your life. Amen. 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 Come on, girl. time she's ever been. She's right here, Danielle. She'll pray with you. Amen. They knocked on her door yesterday on bus route. She came this morning. They've never been saved, I know of. Amen. We need a lady that can lead her to the Lord, y'all. To the Bible. Amen. 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 Come on. Come on. Amen. That's what it's... Hey, they get ready. He, he wouldn't stay dead. He ain't gonna stay gone. Coming back. Hallelujah. Woo! Say it with them. I'll take Jesus. Go right. I'll take Jesus. I'll take Jesus. I don't know about you. I'll take Jesus. Amen. Ask the Lord to come into her heart, y'all. Save her. Isn't that a blessing? Isn't that a blessing? First time she's ever been here. Amen. DJ knocked on her door yesterday. Well, that ought to make the rest of y'all feel about that tall. I'm just kidding. Uh, amen. If DJ can do it, you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. Knocked on her door and she came to church, got saved. And her mom's here too, back there. 
And we got Lord and mercy people here from everywhere. Jim and Goldie. I mean, cannot believe they, the Lord must be coming for sure. Them to be here. I can't believe they actually visited their home church. I'm just kidding. We're glad to have them. And all y'all, good night. A lot of y'all don't even know. Shannon. French. We have been friends. Raise your hand there, girl. We know that girl since she was that high. When she was about 10. And uh, well, good to see her and these girls all the way from Charlotte. And uh, I don't know if all my girls, make sure you see her. I don't know where you're at over there. Uh, but we're, we're glad y'all come. And whoever else, maybe come the first time. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. You know what we are? We're all just a bunch of sinners. Saved by God's grace. Amen. All right. A couple things right quick. Number one. Cameras are off now. Uh, number one. Uh, they're going to be having an Easter egg hunt out there.